Welcome to our lecture online and to give us some idea of what apparent magnitude really means is let's have some examples here so I put down a list of examples again reviewing that the apparent magnitude scale is a numeric scale it goes all the way from some negative values to positive values negative values or smaller values are brighter larger values are dimmer so it's brighter on this side of the scale and it's dimmer on this side of the scale and the dimmest object that we can see with the naked eye without any aid of binoculars or telescope anything like that is plus six magnitude anything beyond that you can no longer see it with the naked eye you need some larger aperture also to compare the brightness of things uh, the way we figure that out is let's say you want to compare a star that has magnitude plus one to a star that has let's say magnitude plus four let's call this star a let's call this star b what you need to do is find the difference in the magnitudes the delta m as we call it and the difference in brightness can be defined by taking the number 2.512 and raising it to the difference in magnitudes the delta m as we call it because magnitudes we use small m for that for apparent magnitude and so this would be equal to 2.512 raised to the 4 minus 1 which is third power then we come up over here and so 2.512 to the third power is about 16 which means that star A is the brighter of the two stars and it is 16 times brighter than star B so in other words you would need 16 stars like star B to put out as much light as one star of type A all right now here's some examples our Sun is of course the brightest object in the sky not because the Sun is particularly bright as a star but because it's so close it has a magnitude of minus 27 26.7 which put it way over here on the magnitude scale the moon is the second brightest object in the sky we can actually see the moon during the day with the Sun shining it has a magnitude I should say apparent magnitude of minus 12.6 Venus besides the moon the brightest object in the sky at minus 4.4 it's the brightest planet and is much brighter than any star out there Jupiter is also brighter than the brightest star at minus 2.6 and finally the brightest star is Sirius this is a star in the constellation Canis Major it is a minus 1.4 apparent magnitude so how much brighter is Venus compared to Sirius well notice the difference if you compare the two the difference would be the delta M would be equal to 3 and here that fits right into the example that means that 2.512 to the third power is 16 and therefore you could say that Venus is 16 times brighter than Sirius it puts out at least from the way we can observe it from here we can see 16 times 16 times as much light coming from Venus as we can see from Sirius and of course Venus doesn't actually put out light itself it simply reflects the sunlight Betelgeuse is a big reddish looking star in the constellation Orion and it has an absolute not an absolute but a apparent magnitude of plus 0.58 so the difference between Sirius and Betelgeuse is about two magnitudes so the difference the Delta M here is about two and again coming over here 2.512 to the two second power is six and a half times but in other words Sirius is six and a half times as bright as Betelgeuse in the sky in actuality Betelgeuse is actually a brighter star but it's so much farther away than Sirius Sirius appears brighter to us and it's all about at this point apparent brightness in a later video we'll show you something about absolute magnitude Polaris is that star that always is pointed really close to the north and it is a fairly bright star at plus 2.0 of course not nearly as bright as Sirius or not nearly as bright as Betelgeuse notice that the difference between Sirius and Polaris is about 3.4 3.4 that puts it somewhere around maybe 25 times as bright or so for Sirius compared to Polaris <clears throat> then we go all the way to the other side of the scale Pluto is a very very dim object it's a very small body way beyond the, the orbit of Neptune typically and it has a magnitude of plus 15 of course that depends a lot upon where Pluto is in its orbit sometimes Pluto is only 30 astronomical units away from the Earth and sometimes it's 50 astronomical units away so you can see that the the brightness of Pluto will vary tremendously depending upon where in its orbit it's at the largest telescopes urban telescopes because of the the um, the atmosphere makes it very difficult to see very sharp images with large telescopes but they can see objects down to a magnitude of about plus 21 plus 21 is extremely dim if you compare let's say plus 21 to Polaris 
that difference is almost 20 magnitudes. So let's just say about 20 magnitudes when you come over here, 20 magnitudes, 2.512 to the 20th power, that is 100 million times. In other words, a large telescope can see objects that are 100 million times dimmer than the star Polaris. It's amazing what they can do. And then, of course, Hubble is the champion of them all. Notice it can see objects to uh, dimness in a way to, you know, we call it apparent brightness, but at this point you could all talk about something really, really dim at plus 30 magnitude. Notice the difference between, like, let's say, Betelgeuse and Hubble is 30 magnitudes. What would 30 magnitude signify. So put another row in there, 30 magnitudes, that would be 2.512 to the 30th power. And that would be another four zeros behind that. So it would be uh, 10 billion, that would be 1 trillion times. So that's a million, that's a billion, and that's a trillion. In other words, the Hubble Space Telescope can pick up images that are a trillion times dimmer than a star like Betelgeuse. It's absolutely amazing what we can actually see with uh, Hubble, and the reason, of course, it's up in space. There's no atmospheric interruption, no atmospheric uh, blurring of any type, so you can see very, very dim images to a dimness. I guess it's still a pair magnitude of plus 30. So hopefully that gives you a good feel of what a pair magnitude is. Again, it, it's the magnitude or the brightness that the object appears to us from here on the Earth. It doesn't reveal anything from its true brightness, because it could be a very uh, dim object that's that's really close, appearing bright, or a very bright object very far away, appearing dim. It's just the way it appears to us from the Earth. How bright does it appear? That's what we call apparent magnitude, with some good examples.